here are the last summer cucumbers and squash that I'm gonna put in the ground as soon as this massive heat wave goes. Good morning, everyone. Well, I haven't done one of these in a while. I am going to take you on a tour of my garden. Gotta get my shoes on. Can't wear those dirty shoes in my house. Uh, There's something, I have a new addition, you just have to see. But first I have to get my shoes on. <laughs> so I wanted to take you on a tour of my garden because we got it all planted. I did most of the planting and Justin did all most of the heavy hard work. Uh, take a look at this. I'm very proud of this. This is my new custom bronze railing. Well, it's bronze color. It's an iron railing, of course. It's secured to these posts and it's secured to the concrete. And I am so thrilled that now I have support going down these rather slightly steeper stairs than, than is the norm. And I just didn't want to wind up with a broken something or other. Okay, I want to start, let's start by, down by the grapes because that's going to be the first thing that gets sun. And I'd love to get this done before we get blasting sun. So we're heading down to what we're calling our vineyard. <laughs> so here we are in my large sloping front yard. And behind me, you'll see the new flower garden. And okay, we had the worst heat wave and I'm gonna tell you about and show you some of the damage. This is the lower huge garden, which is 50 by 105 under the silage tarp. And the reason I haven't jumped into that, besides the fact that I've been so busy getting everything else planted, is because um, we have a leak in the cistern and I can't guarantee that even if I, if I started, I was thinking about peeling this uh, tarp back about 20 feet and just putting in some rows of corn, a different variety than I have planted up there. Uh, but I'm just not sure about the water situation. So hopefully this week, Justin's gonna get it uh, repaired, at least to get us through this growing season. Okay, so over here, let me swing around, you see the vineyard. This is the vineyard. We have nine plants, and I'll walk you over. This yellow hose just lays here, and I attach it to the hose up from the spigot when it's time to water. We went to the extra step of surrounding the bed with cardboard and wood chips to suppress weeds. Uh, now we're getting some weeds inside and I think we're gonna be weeding and putting down weed cloth, a row of weed cloth in there. The plants are looking pretty good considering they got put out here in such a heat wave. Uh, this little netting is just to keep off deer because deer pass through here every day and we have some grapes down here. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? I'm so excited. These are table grapes. I'm not gonna be making wine. I'm not that ambitious. Okay, so let's see. We'll head down this way. As you can see, I recently got my grass mowed again. The advantage to having a big front yard is it's beautiful and the disadvantage is all of these plants down here are pretty far removed from a water source uh, i do have the four-wheeler i'm getting a water tank to put on the back of that to make um, remote watering easier but these elderberry have had a lot of issues from too much heat to pest pressure we have been spraying and you can see this was going on in some lower branches 
these new ones look really healthy. If we stay on top of it, we might get lucky. Once again, when they're far away from the house, you know, you don't notice things as much. This plant looks almost like a different plant, and I guess they're different varieties. I don't know. Where I'm standing is a major route for deer. Every afternoon they go just to the side of that tarp, and they walk through here. They pick around. I get very nervous that they're going to mess with the elderberry. Sometimes they cross the road right there, and then sometimes they go back over there and go into the forest. It depends on the time of day. Yeah, so this, as you can see, this look like two little berries, but I don't know. It did bloom, but that's what's left. A lot of this going on on the leaves. I don't know if that's a disease or pests. Usually when they're crumpled up like that, it's pest pressure. But the new leaves look good, so we've been spraying them with horticultural oil. I know you're only supposed to do that a couple of times a year, but hey, you do what you gotta do. Over here, these cedar trees were planted when I came here. Uh, we added the cannas. The cannas have been almost devastated by Japanese beetle. I didn't get down here because, I don't know what that is, but it's probably not good. This is what Japanese beetle damage does to your cannas. Looks like I'm still gonna have some pretty blooms though. I don't even see any right now, so maybe we've gotten a handle on it. Oh, here's a pest. Sorry. Oh, and there's another one. Where'd it go? That's on my hand. It looks like a ladybug, but it's not. That's a pest. Let's see if I can kill it. Yep. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's doing damage to the leaves also. I guess those leaves are really tasty. Check on this one. Oh, yeah. If you don't know what Japanese beetles look like, you're lucky. <laughs> they really did a number on these plants. Oh, there's one. It's upside down. Yeah. Well, while you're upside down, let's just end it. They're very hard to kill because they're very, uh, they're very tough. That's a jar of soapy water that I'm leaving below the plant so he can just flick the bugs off in it. They're very active in the daytime and they're moving slower at night because they've swallowed up all your, all your leaves. Wow. It's, it's almost beautiful in a way. I mean, look at, Look at that. Well, I guess they did them all. Yeah. But look, I still have flowers. I guess they just like the leaves. That's gorgeous. Okay. Over here we have the new banana plant from Daryl. He gave it to me. This is non-edible. It just gets really big and beautiful, and I'm looking forward to that. And over here we have the castor bean plant, which uh, he also gave me, which is going to be beautiful. And here are those fruit trees that I planted. Uh, they've grown a little bit, not a lot. These are the peach, I think. I mean the um, plum. And. Those are the three little cherry trees I got from Jeff Poppin, and they're still very little. Okay, so let's very quickly hike over to the corner where I put in the forsythia. Now, this whole tract that we had forest mulched, I'm gonna have to have 
bush hogged if I don't get a handle on the weeds. This is a weed. You think, oh, that's a beautiful plant. No, I didn't plant that. That's beautiful. Beautiful, but it's going to be invasive. And this is the thistle. I think it's called milk thistle. Very beautiful flowers. But it's a weed. All these are weeds except this is one. Oh, the other one's... Ah, ha, ha. The other one got eaten. Look at that. It got eaten. Shoot. I haven't been down here in a while. This one is looking pretty good. And so is that one. Okay, so this whole corner is going to have to be weed whacked and gotten under control. Okay, over here. Just want to show you the moringa. I had big hopes for moringa now. That's probably a mole or something under there. See, I wouldn't have even been able to put one foot in this whole section of garden if I hadn't mulched it because it was so dense. Let's see, where's number one? Okay, this is number one, Moringa. I don't have any writing on those tags. I just wanted to be able to distinguish them from all the weeds. That's looking a little yellow. In the case of Moringa, that could be too much water. This is the best looking one. All I was hoping for this year was just some bushes that I could harvest the leaves and this is the one that, oh, there's two that uh, didn't make it. This one doesn't look like it's gonna make it. Okay, so you can see, step in the shade for a second. Oh wait, here's one more. There we go. Up here, there's the house and there is the tarp that we moved from the side garden and unfolded all the way and put it on top of the weeds. And my plan is just to leave it there until I get a lot of other things sorted out. Okay, we're gonna head back over. I wanna show you everything else. The new flower bed took a real hit, a real beating because we put them in in hot sun and they didn't get any shade cloth and some of those tender young plants just didn't make it, mostly calendula. Now, we scattered seeds everywhere, so it's hard to know what are weeds and what are flowers coming up, so I guess we'll just have to see. The established plants made it, even though they took a beating. And these are the Thai basil. They must like heat because they survived these, this row. And then these are two rows of sunflowers and this is a row of wildflowers. And then there were other seeds sprinkled all over. So as you can see, I've got all these little seeds sprouting. So I'm assuming those are flowers, but this is obviously a weed and those things you can't believe how deep those roots go down I think this is nutgrass it's going to be hard to know where to step out here since we sprinkled seeds everywhere it could also be crabgrass or I don't know See, this is what happened to so many of those little ones just shriveled up. But this calendula is blooming, it looks okay. And the four o'clock is surviving, but it looks like it's getting some serious bug damage. It's gonna have to be sprayed. 
Oh boy. This is my coral bells. I need to trim these. Well, I can just break them off. These little flower stalks are done for this year. And it looks like there's weeds coming up in that. Hmm. Denise, did I get your weeds or are those my weeds? Wow. Who knows? There's another big one. Gotta get that out of there. Okay, we're gonna have like a weeding party. I'm gonna invite a whole bunch of people over and we're gonna weed. <laughs> this is such a pretty calendula. And I don't remember which packet or who gave it to me, but it's so different from what I grew in California. This four o'clock is also got, it looks like heat damage and bugs. Chinese tricolor pepper is one, but one, two, three, four. We got five of those still alive. We got a lot of weeds. <sighs> okay, let's head on over to the tomatoes. It's kind of hard to see the tomatoes for the weeds. We have so many weeds in here and that's going to be the first order of business tomorrow when Justin gets back. Today he's having his birthday and they're going fishing. So uh, I hope he has a great day and I look forward to getting him back over here. Take a look. This is the lower terrace. And on the first row we have blue spice basil. This is Black Beauty Eggplant. That's looking great. Some of my others have had so much heat damage. They need to be shaded, obviously. This is Cranberry Hibiscus. I brought these from California and I have four. This is Eggplant Listata. Got the seeds from Jack Redden. This is the same eggplant I grew in California, but I didn't have any seeds. This is another big beauty. This will make flowers to make tea out of, and it's just a very striking plant in the garden because of its color. Uh, this is another black beauty. This is my orange tie. If you remember my orange tie episode, and the leaves do curl up like that. It's, it's funny. It doesn't necessarily mean they're di dying or covered in aphids, but it is alive and it's doing better than some of the other peppers. Another cranberry hibiscus. This is another orange Thai. I put them down here. These are the only two peppers down here because orange Thai can get to be six feet tall. And I thought, well, let's have this, let's have the support of the string, you know. This is the smallest cranberry hibiscus. And this is my only Cape gooseberry. And I am so hopeful that that comes to produce because Cape gooseberry is absolutely stunning. It's just delicious. This is borage, just a small one I stuck here at the end among all these weeds. There's another borage at that end. Borage can get huge, so I thought put it on the end and then we can tie it up against the pole if we need to. Now. Okay, we're going to talk about this uh, pruning versus not pruning single stem. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. It's another borage. Most of the tomatoes are looking pretty good. This is heat damage here, but this plant seems to be recovering. Borage is a great companion plant to tomatoes. It's supposed to keep hornworms away. I don't know if that's really true, but this has come undone, so we got to get that fixed tomorrow. And uh, this is long purple eggplant, and this is, uh, I've got a lot of eggplants. Some of them aren't marked, but I only have four varieties. So, wait, three. Long purple, black beauty, and listata. So as you can see, tomatoes are doing pretty well. Got major weed pressure and pest pressure and heat pressure, but these uh, 
these shade cloths just break up enough of the sun during the day to keep them from crapping out. This obviously is not going to make it. I don't know why it put out one big tomato. I don't even know if that would taste good because the leaves are all shot. I have about 12 replacement tomato plants and all of the ones that need to be replaced will be replaced very soon. Same story on the upper terrace, except there are more cherry tomatoes up here and yesterday I had a handful. Just walked along and ate them. They were so good. Let's see if I can find one now. See, like this plant. I didn't think it was going to make it, but now there's some new growth. It's worth saving. I've had a lot of cat facing, if you know what that is, uh, which it deforms the tomato, but they're still good to eat. It just means that the bloom and if you see this, it just means that it had a whole bunch of water. We had all that rain and the skin is not prepared to, to it's not elastic. So it splits when the tomato starts bulging. Got another one down here. Same story. Still good to eat though, unless pests get in that crack. And here, this is another one where I'm going to have a lot of deformed tomatoes. Let's see what this is. Uh, Florian, Florentina. And I have never grown that one. This is a potato leaf tomato plant, which looks fabulous. In case you didn't know, tomatoes and potatoes are in the same plant family. They're in a family called the nightshades. Look at this one. This is insane. I don't really understand this tomato because this is an Aunt Ruby's German green and that means it's already ripe because, or maybe it's mismarked. It's just supposed to be a green tomato. And then on the same stem, you have all these cherry sized tomatoes. So I don't understand this. This is an anomaly. This big wadded up, it almost looks like six cherry tomatoes in one. Okay, looks like we have some kind of a tiger stripe variety here. I don't see the tag. Where is the tag? The tag, it, oh, it says, oh, this is a black vernissage. Yes, I got that from Baker Creek and that does make a kind of a stripy skin. Borghese, I thought Borghese was a bigger tomato, but it has a pear-shaped kind of, I think that's mismarked. Oh, these things you just have to live with, you know? This one obviously is going to be replaced, as is this one. As is this one, probably. I've got about 10 that need to be replaced, but I've got some good tomatoes, good-looking tomatoes. Look at that. I don't know if I'm going to have enough to sell, but I'm going to have enough to eat. So here is the blueberry enclosure. This netting on the blueberry enclosure is the only reason I wound up with a big container of beautiful blueberries. It's so pretty. Kind of looking at it through the netting there. We got one more harvest, I think, and that'll be it. But nothing like the first one. We got most of the plants cleaned off on the first one. So, over here, this is a new addition. This is a hibiscus that I bought at a nursery. It had been wilting daily in the pot and I finally just said we're putting in this area. This area we hope eventually to be beautiful. <laughs> we didn't have enough cardboard to kill all the grass unfortunately. So now Justin is using the 
cut grass from the mowers and we're going to build it all out kill all this grass and put a little fence around it and start uh, paying more attention to this area this is that fig tree we planted which is looking very healthy but hasn't grown a whole lot the peach trees are full of fruit but i'm told they probably won't taste very good by a local they're very hard right now you can see they're they're loaded the apple trees obviously got that rust from the cedar trees that people have been telling me about and we kind of got to the spray a little too late but since we've sprayed you see this look at the difference it's got new growth here new leaves and new green leaves so that spray really made a difference same story on that apple tree here's my new lemon verbena can't wait for that to bloom we've got to get all these weeds knocked down this is a pawpaw tree. We got that planted this week, finally. And this is another peach tree that's absolutely loaded. In fact, we've got to get support on this tree. It could fall over. The next wind could finish it off. So much to do, you know? Look, see? They fall off before they're ripe. This is the new African blue basil, something I had to have from my California garden. I brought one with me across the country, but it didn't survive. This I picked up at a local nursery. And this is the arbor that Justin built. Let's take a step back. If you didn't see that getting built, he did a great job on that. We had chicken wire and tea posts before. And we're getting, and we're getting berries. There's a lot of red berries on here, but there's also a lot of birds. So birds have been getting most of the ripe ones. Let's see if we can find one. That's still not ripe. That looks doable. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Oh boy, what a treat. Mmm. Mmm. Oh wow. Look at that juicy, that red juice. These are the two new plants. They've had a lot of pest pressure. They eat holes in the leaves. Everything has to be sprayed. It's just ridiculous. Okay, so here are the raised beds that Justin built. We've got four on each side. These back two right ones are still planted with cool season vegetables and the chard is doing amazing. This, this is a chard called Ford Hook. Someone sent me the seeds and this is the best and strongest, prettiest thing growing in my garden. It's unbelievable. All of these really did well in here. Even considering the heat we've had, we got the shade cloth on in time. The only thing that has bolted is the mustard. The kale's still edible. I'm going to come in and have a big harvest. Oops, we got we got a bug here. That's unusual because this netting really did protect this bed. The bed that had a couple little holes in the netting, it got devoured. Devoured. Now, obviously, I planted celery too late. Celery did not have enough time to form heads. And the same for the cabbages. I just planted them too late. Look at this beauty. This is collards, I believe. 
I'm just wondering if I can make up something wonderful and freeze it. I don't know that my grandmother ever did that. I think she always cooked fresh greens, but could be wrong. This bed had more celery than chard and so forth, so you can see it's not as big and lush. So this is the new bed. Well, first of all, we added a few plants to the asparagus bed, and I decided finally to plant the artichokes here because I knew that the roots, they would have plenty of depth for the roots to grow down, you see, because this is a tall bed on the back side. But they looked pretty good, and now they don't. You know, this is just since, since I planted them. This is all new. So this could be heat. I put these little cut-off pots here that I, I remembered I used this technique for cutworm but I actually did it to hold the leaves up off the ground. And I just cut the bottoms off and we secured it with stakes to hold them up. This is unbelievably still alive. This is a roselle. But you know, it just looks so bad. It had a lot of bug damage and I sprayed and sprayed, but now it just, they just look, they don't look like they're gonna make it which is just gonna break my heart because I think those were my only seeds. I don't know, maybe. This is a bed I'm hopeful. I'm always hopeful. This is bronze fennel I bought in a nursery. This looks terrible and I'll probably have to take that out. That was uh, blue spice basil, just like this one. And we popped a little tomato in here. I don't know if that's gonna be good or bad, but this is where I put all my herbs since my herb garden is not finished, I have dill in the middle, which is blooming. And these are the, this is the sticky trap for thrip and leaf miner. And I don't know if that's what's stuck on there, but there's stuff stuck on it. I know the traps reduce, doesn't eliminate, but it reduces this is um, kind of beat up too, but it's got a pepper on it. This is a chocolate pepper. Got a nice looking pepper on there. All the blue spice basil took a beating, so we'll see if it survives. This is stevia, parsley, one pepper over there. And I'll show you on another plant. That's marjoram. Well, one of those is marjoram, one of those is thyme, say, purple sage, tarragon, and garlic chives. And I think it's another variety of thyme down there. Okay, here, oh, well, you know. These are the three beds of strawberries. I'm eliminating one next time around. Okay, this is what I'm finding on these peppers, these little white spots on the leaves. They were not here when I planted it. That happened like immediately. And since there's shade cloth, I don't think it's from heat. I think it's from some kind of pest or disease. And I need to get out here and spray. I just watered everything. I got everything watered before 7.30. And look at this, this is so bad. It was not like this like four days ago when we planted. This. This uh, Nardello has escaped the damage so far. And look at this. You're gonna see this in another video. I got some close-up pictures. I'm thinking that these may be hornworm eggs and I'm waiting till they hatch and then I'm gonna verify. Okay, so those are 20 pepper plants in there. The lettuce cart is looking good. We put in more compost. I added some stuff. I added some little celeries that I'm gonna use just as an herb, fresh herb. And it has one of those board hooks, just amazing stuff. All right, let's go to the back. Oh, here, here's my, these are my Jerusalem artichokes. They're staying in this pot for now. I don't want them to get out of control. And this is my Rose of Sharon, one of them. And I want to divide those and plant them out. They, they're the last things to get planted out. Here are all my replacement tomatoes. 
Some are in better shape than others. And here's my other Rose of Sharon. And uh, a couple of bean replacements over here. That's going to go back over here. Nothing's happening yet on the potatoes we just planted. Whoosh. These, this is my Kalamadin lime that I brought from California in the back seat of my Prius. I'm just waiting for the daikon radish pods to dry so I can harvest the seeds. Here are some onions and garlic and shallots pastas, irises that people have sent me, and comfrey, which is going to get planted out somewhere. Just got to decide where. Rosemary, my little fig tree, which doesn't seem to be doing that well, no matter what I do. It's losing all of its leaves. And my passion fruit, same variety I had in California. Pastas that were a gift. This is my this actually looks like it's got some new leaves on it, and I'm going to pot that up. That was a little mandarin that I brought from California, and this is my kefir, kefir, Thai lime tree, which seems to have survived okay. Let's head to the back. Just walk by the deck. This is where the kitties have their playground, although now they're staying inside. The garage. Uh, got the garage cleaned out and they're staying in there uh, when they're napping or when I'm inside. This is the 32 by 42 bed that we've developed and this is this quadrant is all squash and cucumbers and I'm planting in mounds obviously. These have all been seeded and I've got lemon cucumbers shaded. I didn't want them to sizzle and dry up like everything else did. So there's several in a little bunch and then I'm just gonna let them all grow up and grow over these little green terraces, trellises. These have not been planted. This is the bean trellis that Justin and his friend built and it's all planted with cow peas, rattlesnake pole bean, and what else did I put in there? I can't remember. I had one extra okra plant and I stuck it at the end here and it's, it's actually doing well and didn't have any shade. This is my okra that looked so fabulous. And we got it out here and I got it shaded so it it has survived. But there is some damage here and there. This is a row of eggplant, black beauty and long purple and a listata are the varieties I'm growing. This row looks pretty good. This is my corn. I have seven rows. And this is the Sweet Luck variety that my friend Daryl has developed over four decades, three or four decades. Over here, okay, so this quadrant is all eggplant and beans. And I've ordered more shade cloth and hopefully I can get this stuff shaded because we're going to have a brutal week. Some of these are flowering and looking good and others are looking a very bad. Like that one. But this is just from heat. The sun is too hot and it's killing those leaves and plants can't, you know, continue to grow and thrive if their leaves are burnt. This one looks bad too. I mean, I've never grown this many plants of anything before, so.
One other thing I'm very excited about that Justin is working on, and I haven't had a chance to really show it because he's just working a little bit here and there because there have been so many more important things to get done, like planting. But he is developing a beautiful garden over here with a rock wall around it, which is going to be a great place to grow some plants. And I'm thinking that might be where the roselle goes. I don't know what's gonna go over here, but take a look. So if you recall, I was debating on whether to take down that cedar tree and I did. And you didn't see that video because it was lost, but he is building a rock wall around this whole area which will be a huge garden space. And all of this rock came out of my wall in my forest. And he is shaping it to fit around this corner here. Which I just love. We'll have to have something coming down through here to direct water. This is our projected area for my new woodshed, which he's going to build. It's going to have a little bit of a Frank Lloyd Wright style to it, so I'm looking forward to that. As you can see, the forest is just completely dense up there. I have not been in the forest since it fleshed out. Well, since I developed poison ivy, I haven't been back up there. He's up there all the time. Uh, bringing rocks. He's shaping rocks. Unlike Daryl, who spends the time to find the exact right rock for the spot, he is shaping them and cutting them, and I'm very excited about this project because look at all of that space from there all the way over that I will be able to plant things. Okay, let's get something cold to drink. Here's a very pretty moth hanging out on my front window. Okay, we're back. I've got some cold chaga tea. Mm. Cool off. That's the tour. As you can see, a garden is never perfect and it's never done. I used to say that in California and I'm saying it now. I've got pest problems. I've got intense heat from planting the plants, putting the plants in when it was already really hot. And uh, so I've got to get those plants shaded uh, and I've got a lot to do. So <laughs> I hope you'll stay with the journey. Thank you so much for following this channel. I hope you'll hit the bell to subscribe and scroll down and hit all so you won't miss anything right here on my new homestead in Tennessee. Yeah, I'm, I'm Kay and I'll see you next time. I think a mosquito just bit me. So, oh, my leg hurts. <laughs> Tried to cross my legs. No, that's, can't cross my legs when I've got this thing. If you enjoyed this video, please watch these. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I'll see you in the next video.